Hello, BookTube. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. So, I am taking part in Nonfiction November, and for the month of November, I am reading two books. And one of the books that I've recently finished is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. And I gotta tell you, this was an amazing book. I really enjoyed this book. Now, the book is a memoir, a biography on Henrietta Lacks and the HeLa cells. And HeLa cells are a type of cell that can be regrown, uh, that reproduce, and they don't die. So essentially they can be used for cancer research and other types of research, and you can always make them. So typically normal cells have a, a lifespan, so they can only reproduce a set number of times before they start to degrade. HeLa cells, which stands for Henrietta Lacks, her first uh, two, the first two letters of her first name and the first two letters of her last name, HeLa, they don't die, so they can keep on reproducing. And it's amazing. Skloot talks about the theory in, that was uh, discovered. They believe that um, her, her cervical cancer cells, those are the HeLa cells, uh, were infected by the human Papillona virus 18 strain, and that's a separate, that's a different kind of strain. It's the human, it's HPV, but it's a different strain. And for some reason, it caused her cancer cells to continually reproduce without degrading. And it's incredible. And these cells have been used in medical research for testing various types of drugs uh, to fight cancer, for other types of research, uh, cloning, things like that. And her cells have actually been essential in developing vaccines, including one I believe was for polio. So her cells were incredible. Unfortunately, nobody told Henrietta Lacks that her cells were being used, and no one told her family that her cells were being used until 26 years later, when the Rolling Stones had a reporter come by who wanted to do a biography on Henrietta Lacks. So we're going to get into all that a little later on, but first I want to talk about the author, Rebecca Skloot. So Rebecca Skloot uh, first heard of Henrietta Lacks back when she was around 16 years old in biology class. Her professor was talking about HeLa cells and how important they were in research. And he had mentioned that uh, they were these cells belonged to a black woman named Henrietta Lacks. Unfortunately, that's all the information he had. So when Skloot discovered that there wasn't really anything other than her name known, she went about doing some research and trying to find out more about this person who, whose cells revolutionized the medical industry. And Rebecca Skloot herself is a author who writes a lot of science, who specializes in science and medicine. And she's published over 200 essays and uh, featured stories throughout her career. And I believe she teaches writing at a college. I can't remember which college it is, but she has won 13 awards in the past 20 years. And eight of those awards were because of this book. And I don't know how much I can tell you about this book. Well, it, I'm, there's really, it's not like you're gonna, it's not a spoiler or anything. This is a nonfiction, but it is an amazing book. So if you want a book that will lift your spirits, that will break your heart, that will get you angry, that will bring out so many emotions in you that you didn't know you had, read this book. It's very good. So let's talk about Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta was born in 1920, and she was one of 10 children, I believe it was. And uh, unfortunately, her mother died in childbirth, and her father couldn't take care of all 10 children. So what they typically did at the time was they split the children up among family members and Henrietta Lacks went to her grandfather and uh, that's where she met her future husband, David Lacks. And I don't know if they were first or second cousins, but I do know that they were related. And there was, I think there was a nine year age difference between them or was there a five year age difference? I can't remember. But um, they lived with their grandfather and he owned a tobacco farm and uh, they learned how to harvest and sell tobacco. And Henrietta Lacks got pregnant at 14 years old and married David Lacks. And they moved into a more suburban area where David took on a job at a steel mill. 
And unfortunately, David himself was not as faithful as one would have hoped. So Henrietta developed a lot of sexually transmitted diseases because of David's infidelity. And it's theorized that uh, one of the strains of human papillomavirus um, had triggered her cancer cells to keep on reproducing. Uh, Henrietta unfortunately developed cervical cancer in the mid to late 40s and went for radon treatment, which essentially burns the cancer out. Uh, unfortunately, while it did work a little bit, it didn't actually complete or didn't kill all of the cancer and the cancer regrew. And uh, her cervical cancer came back and she was admitted to hospital and she suffered a great deal. So, on, and Scoot talks about that and you really felt for Henrietta. Eventually, they just had to put her on morphine because there was nothing else that they could do. And Henrietta passed away at the age of 31. And she had asked one of her sisters to make sure that her children, five children, were taken care of. And her children were as follows. You had Lawrence, Elsie, Deborah, David Jr., uh, who's called Sonny in the book, and I think everyone in the family refers to him as Sonny. And then you had Joseph, the youngest of the children. Um, it's a heartbreaking account of what happened to during their childhood. Now, Deborah was uh, sexually assaulted when she was young. Uh, Joseph was beaten by not his stepmother, but uh, a couple that moved in with David to help take care of the children. Uh, he was severely beaten and he had anger issues and eventually was incarcerated and um, turned to Islam as a form of changing his life around and renamed himself to Zachariah. And then you had Lawrence and David Jr. who joined the military. Uh, or David Jr., Sonny, was in the Air Force. And it's really unfortunate because after the military career, they had distinguished careers in the military. They came back to their hometown and either because of uh, circumstances or because of the times back in the 1950s, they fell back into their old ways and um, that wasn't a good thing. Uh, I believe Sonny got into a little bit of trouble with the law. Lawrence kept on working. I think he had a general store, but times were tough for the Lax family. There wasn't a lot of money going available. Uh, Medicare was not ex not existent unless you had insurance and they didn't. So it was a struggle for all of them. And all, during all that time, Henrietta Lacks cells, without her knowledge, were being used to perform cancer research. And they were being sold. And millions of dollars were being made through the selling of Henrietta Lacks's cancer cells, these HeLa cells. And the family never got a, a dollar, a dime for it. It was a very sad uh, thing to read and it made you angry. It made you angry that the medical community could do something like this and there was no compensation for uh, the families, the people who whose tissues were being used. And it wasn't just the Lax family. There were others uh, throughout the book and Rebecca Sloot mentions two individuals who also had that happen to them and uh, they filed lawsuits and uh, eventually it was determined that if you donate tissue or if you give tissue for testing, that tissue no longer belongs to you and it can be used for research. And if it doesn't have your name associated to it, it can be used for whatever purposes are necessary. And this was back in 2010. I don't know if the laws have changed since then, but it does make you angry to think that you don't own the parts of your body that are taken away uh, if they're used for medical research. Whatever happens with them, whatever monetary gains are done because of that, you don't get a cent of that. And that was sad. But the book was very good. Deborah Lax, the daughter of Henrietta, was the heroine in this book, in my opinion. She, she made you hopeful. She brought an optimism when she wanted to help Rebecca Skloot research um, information on her mother or on her older daughter, on her older sister, Elsie. So Rebecca, or not Rebecca Sloot, sorry. Henrietta Lacks had an, a daughter named Elsie. And unfortunately, Elsie was 
mentally disabled and she had to be put into a hospital for the disabled and uh, Henrietta Lacks would visit her once a week and spend time with her but when Henrietta died Elsie was left alone and she died a couple months later and that really hurt I mean if you want heartbreak it's in this book it's a very good book uh, what else can I tell you uh, the individual who discovered that uh, Henrietta's cancer cells could keep on going. His name was George Guy. And he knew who Henrietta was, but he never revealed her name. And he tried to keep it a secret from others so that uh, they couldn't trace it back to Henrietta or her family. Eventually, people did find out uh, who her family was, and they tried to extract more cells from her family. And Deborah went in thinking that she had cancer or thinking that she was going to end up like her mother. So she willingly went in and gave blood to these researchers without knowing that they were performing research and not testing her for cancer. So it's heartbreaking to think that people were like that and people are still like that today. And it's, it's sad to know that that's the case. Oh, Skloot traveling. Some of the stuff I didn't believe, like Scoot, like Rebecca Skloot getting into some guy's car, being driven to some other guy's house, and sitting there waiting for him to decide whether or not he's going to help her research or provide information on Henrietta Lacks. Like, I don't care who you are, that's not safe. Or her going into, I think it was, you know, a dangerous neighborhood because obviously... She went to a grocery store that had been robbed multiple times, so it must have been a dangerous neighborhood. Going there and, you know, driving around, asking questions, getting out of her car, waiting with five uh, strange men for a, an elderly lady to show up. I don't know if she really did those things, to be honest with you, because it's very brave for someone to take chances like that. So... Could she have embellished a little bit of her story? Maybe, but it doesn't detract from the book. The book itself was a wonderful book, very well written, and it just, it was just incredible. I got to tell you, Deborah for me was the heroine of this story. I really enjoyed reading about Deborah, and uh, it hurt me when, when she was afraid to come forward and talk about anything to Rebecca and then slowly she came around and they became the best of friends and they worked together to find out more information on Elsie Henrietta's eldest daughter and Henrietta herself and I was so proud of Deborah uh, for doing what she did and accomplishing what she did and and I don't want to give too much away but um, the book it did make me very sad at the end uh, knowing what happened to the family. And the book is very good at the end. It has a final chapter that talks about all of the individuals in the book and where they are now. So I did enjoy reading that. But yeah, for me, Deborah was the heroine of this book. And, um, you know, if there's another book about Deborah Lacks, I would definitely read that. She was just an amazing character. But that's my review of The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks right here. I would give it a four out of five stars. This was an amazing read. I would recommend that you read it. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Fred and you're watching Read by Fred.